Some of you may have heard of the Golden Record. I don't mean some kind of award that's given to artists who have sold X number of records. This one is a very specific Golden Record. In 1977, the Space Administration, the NASA, put together a record, literally gold, gold gold-plated, full of global songs. Everything from Johann Sebastian Bach to uh, Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good to a Peru wedding song to a girl's initiation song in Zaire to the flower song in China and dozens, dozens more of songs from throughout the world. And then to that, on this golden record, They added some greetings in various languages and also various sounds from the planet. And then they put in a few pictures and then they put the golden record, a copy, two copies. They put the golden record into the Voyager spaceships, the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 that were launched in 1977, and they're still going, and they're still carrying the golden record. As of this night, 2021, Voyager 1 is believed to be more than 14.4 billion miles away from the earth. And the golden records are still there, and the golden record is meant to bring a message to someone out there Who might find it? Of course, if it's going to get played again, it's going to have to be by an extraterrestrial being. And those aliens will have to have ears. We're just assuming. We don't know. They'd have to have ears. The aliens would have to have hands to pick up the album and play it. But hopes aren't. Somebody is going to find it. The late Carl Sagan, who worked on the project, said, the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life. By the way, the trajectory of Voyager 1 has been looked at and projected and estimated, and it is believed that they have that trajectory estimated for the next 40 years thousand years. They have a spot where they think it'll be about 1.8 billion light years from a star with a name this long or numbers this long. And they think that's where the golden record aboard aboard, aboard the Voyager will be 40,000 years from this night. This year, two music professors recently wrote a book. It is called Alien Listening, and it is about the golden record. They look at the songs of the time. They're studying the period and what that says about the 1970s in America back then. And one of the, one of the authors, Professor Alex Redding of Harvard, says, I think it's a question we should ask ourselves. How can we use music for communication especially for communication with someone we do not know at all. In the meantime, we will wait to hear from whoever it is out there who is going to find the Voyager 1 and find the golden record, hear the music of the earth, and hopefully get back to us in some kind of way. So we will wait for the next 40,000 years, and it's a possibility. Now, God did not send a golden record. He could have. But God instead sent angels with a heavenly message, wanting to communicate that message to the earth in song. And so God sent the angels with a song. Where would Christmas be without the angels, without the golden song that the angels were singing in the sky by the second or third century, the church already sang it in Latin, Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest. So we know from the Christmas story that first one angel appeared to these shepherds out in the field and jolts them awake. 
which is a frightening thing. We find that throughout the Bible. Whenever an angel does appear, everybody is frightened, and the angel has to say, do not be afraid. Evidently, it is their military-like appearance. They are more military-oriented and military personality, and they have this otherworldly shine. And so the military appearance of an angel, they're always guys. I don't know, where do we get having blonde girls play angels all the time in our place. I don't know. They are always military-looking soldiers in the Bible. Nothing like Hallmark. I know some of you watch those Hallmark movies. I know some of you have sat with a spouse having to watch some of those Hallmark movies. Are those Hallmark cards? They're not, angels in the Bible are nothing at all like that. Think more Ninja or uh, Colin Powell. Uh, and, you know, think in those terms of a mighty soldier. In his book of Ezekiel, an angel appears and has four heads. No wonder they are afraid. So, <laughs> the other thing about angels, we find they don't like small talk. They are not into how you doing, things going all right with you, how's the weather? They're not into that. So this angel is very typical. The angel comes to the shepherd and he barks an order, do not be afraid. I bring good tidings of great joy. To you is born a Savior. He is Christ the Lord. Go and find this baby in Bethlehem. And then suddenly... Suddenly a hole opens up in heaven and there is brightness and there is movement. And suddenly out of that hole from heaven there come angels dipping and wheeling like a flock of birds. And then suddenly, as though on cue and with the air totally alive, they, they just fall into a strict formation, lined up, lined up one after the other, perfectly straight lines. They line up because they are a host of angels. Host is a military term in the Bible. So it is an army of angels. It's a singing army, kind of like the, the Aggie, the singing cadets, you know, for a &O. Okay, I'm an Aggie. I know most of you are not, all right? Uh, but I can't think of another singing group like that. They're like cadets. These angels are like singing cadets. And so they communicate the message they have been sent to give to earth. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward all. It is a singing message sent from heaven to earth. And then, just as quickly as they came, they break rank. They dip and wheel two or three times, and then they rocket straight up into heaven, and the cloven skies are closed. And once again, it is a dark night and a silent night. And in heaven and on earth, it is as still as still can be. Because back home in heaven, the angels pause for a moment and they say, what was that? Who were those, those earth aliens? Do you think they understood anything of our song? Do you think these, these people we saw out in some field, will the music convince them of what God is doing on this night? Has the melody of God's composing some way made it into their hearts and minds, or is it going to die within a week? Will the people of earth catch the beat of God's music? Can they sing the song of the good news of the birth of Jesus? And in the field... It is also very still because for just a moment the shepherds don't move. They're frozen in place. They say, what was that? One of them says, were those angels? Are angels really a thing? And then another one says, well, you know, I think we better do what they say. They looked like they meant business. And another one said, well, let's wait till our shift is over. And then three of them at once said, no. They said, go now, so let's go now. And they went now. The way the Bible puts it is, they went with haste. And they went to the city 
of Bethlehem. You see, they didn't want to just see the angels. They wanted to see the one who sent the angels, which really is why we come together on this night. We don't want to just see the angels. We want to see the one who sent the angels. And so they find baby Jesus. He's wrapped in swaddling cloths just like every other baby. What kind of sign was that? But then he sees he's in a manger, and beside him are Mary and Joseph. And we will not hear of these shifty-eyed, blessed shepherds ever again. Maybe no one believed them. But that did not stop them from telling. Making, as the Bible says, making widely known what had been told them and telling about the child they had seen. When you have seen and heard and know something and it is of great joy, you can't help but sing out. You can't help but sing it and tell it. You can't keep quiet inside. Kind of ironic, the great Caesar Augustus in faraway Rome, (laughs) there were signs posted in stone around the Roman Empire, the places they had conquered, and it said, Caesar Octavian Augustus, he is the ruler of the world, he is the savior of the world, he is the son of God, Octavian Augustus, Caesar Far away in Rome and his governor, Quirinius, in Syria, they were world shakers. They were world movers. They could say it and it would be done. And they were most certain of the invincible power of Rome. Rome would be eternal. Those people, even with their local spies, did not have a clue as to what God was doing in Bethlehem on that first Christmas of how God is establishing a kingdom starting that night, a kingdom that will outlast the fall of Rome and the fall of every other empire in the world. It was a kingdom that will be eternal. They are oblivious. They do not know a thing about what is going on. They can't catch the beat. They can't hear the song of the angels. But the shepherds knew. They feel the beat. They feel the beat of the song of what God is doing. They they know that God's song is never going to die. Glory to God in the highest. The Savior is born. Peace to everybody. Peace everywhere. And that song will be sung. At the 3,000th Christmas, and at the 40,000th Christmas, wherever the golden record may be, that song will still be sung, and it will be sung on the last Christmas that this world will ever know. Always, as in the old carol, there are angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. God bless those angels singing to those shepherds of all people. Evidently, God's not very choosy about whom God chooses because the shepherds weren't as scorned as we sometimes think, but they were no doubt among the lowly. Usually, if you couldn't get another job, you could be a shepherd. So they were among the lowly, not much money, They weren't very religious because the temple wouldn't allow them inside. They smelled. They smelled like sheep and sweat. And if you got close enough, you could get a little whiff of of Jack Daniel and camel cigarettes. (laughs) Shepherds. That's the way shepherds were. So God is not very careful about whom God invites to see his son Jesus. Maybe Santa checks his list and Googles it twice, but God really does not separate separate out the naughty and the nice. His love comes to the rich and the poor, the beauties and the beast, the brave and the broken. And God shows his love in Jesus, the baby in the manger, 
The baby who never gets above his raising. The baby who will grow up and he will always have a hankering for the last and the least and the lost. Always inviting people into God's song. Into the movement that God has started in this world. Jesus grew up. He was put to death on a wooden cross, started in a wooden manger, died on a wooden cross. He forgave sin. In fact, we say he took on our sin and gave us his righteousness. He took upon himself our death and gave us his life. And so the rhythm of his followers becomes exactly that, dying and rising, dying and rising, dying daily to sin, rising daily to new life again. That's the beat to free our souls. Doobie Brothers, anybody remember them? The Doobie Brothers, and give me the beat, boy, to free my soul. Lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Oh, good. Even millennials know that. That's <laughs> not just boomers. But that is the beat that God intends to use in this world to free our souls. And the finale will be resurrected life, everlasting, eternal. And the beat goes on. The beat goes on. The, the 70s again. The Sonny and Cher. And the beat goes on. And the beat goes on. God's song. The beat of God's song goes on. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. Joy to the earth. The Savior reigns. Your sweetest songs employ. Your life may be full of a million things. There may be no room at the end for one more thing. But I tell you what, there's always an empty stable that will do. And there's always an empty manger somewhere in your life. And if anybody can find it, God can find that empty manger and he can fill it with the song of Jesus, born this night. And the beat goes on, and the beat goes on. Amen. We're inviting Goppy Road now to lead us in the song, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. How about we stand?